Welcome back, everybody. So Michelle LeClaire says that she joined the Church of Scientology as a teenager. She became a dedicated member over the years, donating millions of dollars to the organization. But in her new book, Perfectly Clear, LeClaire says the church tried to destroy her when she left after 21 years. Watch this. I was 18, I got into a really bad car accident. I went underneath two semi-trucks and then a third one rolled over the top of my car. And I think at that moment, there was something that kind of came over me. It was probably the first moment that I wanted to look into something spiritually. In 1989, Michelle LeClaire joined her mother, Terry, in the Church of Scientology. Right after my accident, the minister that came um, to the hospital said to me, you know, in Scientology, we believe that all accidents and illnesses stem from suppression in your life. LeClaire says she started sessions, a type of counseling with members of the organization. When I did the security check, I think the first thing that I went over was my own sexuality. But I would push those thoughts down and um, I would be a good Scientologist. I wanted to be accepted. At 21, LeClaire married and she had her husband join the Church of Scientology. They had four children, but she says her relationship with her husband was rocky and she says she turned to Scientology for help. Every time I tried to reach out to the church, my thoughts of women and my confession um, of homosexuality was used against me. She says the church advised her to take expensive marriage courses from them. She did, but after 14 years, she'd finally had enough. LeClaire says she demanded a divorce, despite the church's lack of support. I said, if you do not get me out of session and start this divorce immediately, you will not get another dime from me. And the next day I was in the chaplain's office with a lawyer on the phone writing up our divorce agreement. By this time, LeClaire had built an insurance business and says she gave a lot of her money to the church. I probably spent, between donations and services, well over $5 million to the church. Following her divorce, LeClaire says she fell in love with a female friend. She was the kindest, sweetest, most honest person that I had met at that time. I had just come in from a trip with her and my phone rings and it's my mentor in the church. And she says, are you having an affair with a woman? And everything in me wanted to scream from the top of my lungs, I am in love with a woman. But I couldn't get those words out because I was scared to death. In 2010, after 21 years in the Church of Scientology, LeClaire says she stopped communicating with the church altogether. In 2011, LeClaire and her business partner received notification they were under investigation for securities fraud. And in 2012, the California Department of Corporations filed a civil lawsuit against them, accusing them of operating a $21 million Ponzi scheme, ripping off investors, most of whom were seniors, for millions of dollars. A dark past is uncovered. LeClaire and her business partner had been raising money for film projects over the years, but ran into financial issues, the extent of which she claims she was unaware of. They reached a settlement with the state and she surrendered her insurance license. But in 2015, the L.A. County DA's office charged LeClaire and her business partner in a 72-count criminal complaint for the same crime. She struck a deal with the DA. And to avoid a possible felony conviction, she agreed to repay investors an additional $1.2 million and to testify at trial against her co-defendant. The case against him was eventually dropped for lack of evidence, and the statute of limitations had run on most of the counts. In her new book, LeClaire claims government investigations were instigated by the Church of Scientology. I think that they were trying to see what they could find on me so that they could blackmail me. I have a copy of an anonymous letter that started that investigation, and it is written exactly as a Scientologist would write a letter. The state says its investigation started with a civilian complaint, adding in a statement, the notion that this case had anything to do with Scientology is patently false, like the claims made to investors in LeClaire's Ponzi scheme. LeClaire conned Californians, most of whom were seniors, out of their life savings, and she got caught. And the Church of Scientology has also denied her claim, saying civil charges against Ms. LeClaire were initiated by her elderly victims, not by the church. Any suggestion that the church was involved is false. Instead of accepting responsibility for her actions, Ms. LeClaire is peddling fiction. 
It is shocking that an individual who narrowly escaped jail time for masterminding a multi-million dollar Ponzi scheme would be deemed a credible source. Please help me welcome Michelle, Michelle LeClaire. Thank you for being here. All right, so your mom was in the church, and that's, that, that was how you first got introduced to it. At, at what age? At 18. At 18, okay. Right. So you write in your book about per- Perfectly Clear, it's called, based, I guess, on the documentary Going, Going Clear, right, or Getting Clear? Yeah, it's, okay. it's a pun on clear, and then also that, you know, love made, made things perfectly clear for me. Okay. So you write about the auditing sessions that you did, and this is a part of Scientology, says everybody who's been a part of it. What is an auditing session? So it says you and I are sitting here talking, but the difference is, and what makes it so strange, is there's something called an e-meter, so it is a round device with an electrode, and I would be holding cans, and you would be like looking Campbell's at soup the, cans. Yeah, they they kind of look like that. <laughs> they have different sizes to fit different hand sizes, okay. and you would be looking at the e meter, and you would ask me a question, and then if it reacted on the meter, then you would ask me more about that question. Okay. So it's kind of like a lie detector is the best way. Um, Church of Scientology believes that you have subconscious thoughts that maybe you're not aware of. So this meter is to help detect those subconscious thoughts. And the, and the Campbell soup cans have the answer. Okay. <laughs> the e-meter supposedly has right. the answer. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I understand. It's a little a, embarrassing A right lot now. of religions <laughs> yeah. have weird beliefs. It's yeah. not, they're they not yeah. the only ones. Yeah. Um, and there's a debate about whether Scientology is a religion at all, but so far the IRS is saying they qualify. Uh, so you liked the e-meter, right? You liked it. Like, you, you talk about feeling euphoric at the end of these sessions. Well, I like the session. I think when you're 18 years old and you're trying to figure yourself out, anyone you talk to, uh, it feels good to be able to talk about yourself or about your concerns. You know, you kind of forget that the e-meter is there. there. And, um, and, and to be accepted, right? Because these are not right. judgmental sessions. That's right. You, you, you don't get any opinion in the, in the session. They ask you a question, you answer the question. And then they ask you an earlier question you know, time that this happened to you. And then an earlier time it happened. So they give you useful life tools. I mean, I've heard this from a lot of ex-Scientologists that the reason people are attracted to Scientology is it's it's not all like odd stuff. Some of the the advice is very practical and helps people improve their lives. And this is one of the draws to it, especially when you're 18, 19 years old. Um, But then you, you write in the book about the amount that they had you work. Like most religions, I don't know, they don't require you to to work for them. Talk about the amount that you were working and what they had you doing. Well, I mean, I don't think that it depends. If you're in the Sea Org, you work all the time. I mean, you're cleaning out garbage cans, you're sweeping floors, you're working, you know, 14, 15, 16 hours a day, and that's what my mother was doing. You know, for me, it was always about what are you doing, how much money are you donating? And so you have business consultants that are helping you expand your business, why? So that you can give more money. So they supported, because you started an insurance business, which I we'll did. get to, but the, they supported you in those efforts. They did. I mean, they had management consulting. Look, L. Ron Hubbard wrote something about everything, and I think that's why it's all-consuming. How to raise a family, how to have a marriage, how to run a business. And so what happens is your entire life is, you know, encapsulated by this one religion, or I would call it a cult. So you're totally able to work outside of Scientology if you so choose, or you can devote your life to working inside Scientology. And if you work outside of Scientology, they may support your efforts like they did with you. Right. You write in the book about a pressure, though, to associate only with Scientologists or mostly with Scientologists, saying that they would ask you about the people in your life, does this person, is this person open to bettering themselves through Scientology? And if the answer to that was no about a colleague, what would they say? Well, you had to look at the people you were around. I mean, the whole thing was to make sure, were you better, bettering yourself every day? And if you were, then, then if I wanted to be friends with you and you didn't want to better yourself through Scientology, then I didn't need to be friends with you. And um, it was always about introducing somebody to Scientology. You know, Leah explains it well. I mean, Leah Remini. It, yeah, Leah Remini it talks about the amount of people she had to recruit into the church. Everyone who worked in my company were doing Scientology courses because I was asking them to do them. Mm-hmm. And if you're not into the Church of Scientology, you don't believe in its tenets, they label you a suppressive person. If you SP. speak out against the Church of Scientology, okay. you are labeled a suppressive person, um, which I sure. 
I'm sure I am right now. I, I have a feeling, yeah. I, have a yeah. feeling I am too. Yeah. Uh, but that, that's okay. I'm good yeah. with that. Yeah. Um, listen, we're going to be right back with more from Michelle, who says she donated over $5 million to the church when all was said and done. Don't go away. So we've been speaking this morning with Michelle LeClaire, a former Scientologist who claims the church came after her in ways she never could have imagined when she confessed that she was gay. Uh, and then she stopped giving donations and ultimately left the religion behind. The church denies all of this. Uh, so, Michelle, you were married to a man. It was a rocky relationship, and you decided that you wanted a divorce. Yes. Um, you say you got considerable pushback from the church on, on that request. I mean, why did you have to... I mean, listen, I'm Catholic. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not in favor of divorce either. Right. So what, what is different about Scientology? Well, I tried to divorce five times, I mean, within the first year of the marriage. And every time you go in, you're required to do uh, a marriage course, which is more auditing, um, with, with your partner. And then after that, you go through counseling with a chaplain. It always comes back to, if you made a commitment to someone, what are you doing against that person that you feel like you want to leave them? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what happened to that communication? It never, for me, was about what was he doing to me. It was always about what was I doing or withholding from him that I wanted to leave. But, but you know, you can make the argument that that's about personal responsibility, right? Always look at yourself. What can I do differently right. to change my own circumstance? I mean, how actively involved in your marriage did they get? Oh, to every single detail. And you can say that, and that's fine in a normal marriage, but not one when you're being abused. And so when you go to the church and ask for help, and they tell you that you're not doing your wifely duties enough um, and send you back home to have a child, then, you know, that's a problem. Wifely duties meaning sex? Is that what you mean? Yes. So they would get that involved? Yes. Every detail. Um, so you claim that your ex-husband was, that he abused you? Yes. I should tell, uh, tell the audience that we have not been able to reach him, and mm -hmm. you didn't report the abuse at the time to right. the authorities. So we haven't been able to independently uh, verify right. that. Now, the Church of Scientology tells us they had no knowledge concerning your allegations of abuse by your ex-husband. They go on to say that the church has a zero tolerance policy on physical and sexual mm -hmm. abuse and reports uh, such abuse as and when required by law. So they don't, right. they're not buying that they were ever informed of any abuse in your marriage. Well, I'm not really aware of anything that the Church of Scientology takes responsibility for. You know, I mean, they're built on lies. I don't expect them to say anything else. But, you know, I have witnesses, you know, my sister witnessed many things, you know, people that, that worked for me witnessed things, um, and it was not a, not a good life to live. You, as we documented in the piece, there comes the time where the light bulb moment happens for you and you realize, I'm, I'm attracted to another woman. Right. And I, I might be a lesbian. Right. Um, and this too, you say, did, n did not go over well with the Church of Scientology, which you say in the book made very clear that L. Ron Hubbard was against homosexuality, that he thought homosexuals were criminals, right. and so on. Now, the, the, the Church denies that, too, I should say. They also say, just get this one out of the way, they say, contrary to your claims, your homosexuality was never an issue with the Church. They say Michelle was apparently involved in infidelity, i.e. cheating on her husband, and there's no requirement whatsoever that a divorce be blessed by the Church. The concept does not exist in Scientology. So what... What do you say was the pushback on, on you being gay? Well, I'm holding back not really laughing at that statement. Um, all you have to do is just look at what L. Ron Hubbard says about gay people. I mean, it's, it's very simple. I mean, he considers them the lowest of the low. He thinks that they should be taken out of society. He states it in Dianetics. He states it in the chart of human evaluation. I tried to come out gay at 19. At 19 years old, I was not allowed to have any relations with women. When, after I was divorced, left my, my ex, um, I fell in love with a woman. And um, I knew that that was right for me. I mean, it was the greatest thing I'd ever known. Mm -hmm. But Michelle talks about how the church allegedly forced her to go around to people who were strangers to her within the church to offer her atonement for having lesbian thoughts. Right. Um, we're going to pick it up there after the break. And we're back now with Michelle LeClaire, who was a Scientologist for decades until she finally left the church and says trouble began for her and how. Um, before we get to the trouble, so when, when they learned that you were, you were having lesbian thoughts, 
you had to you say you had to go through a multi-step process to quote atone for those thoughts including going around to people within the church and apologizing right so they they believe that i chose the wrong group so if i was going to pretend to be part of a group that was so low then um, I had to choose to be part of my Scientology group again, and I had to ask to be accepted. So I took what's called a liability formula around with all the details of my thoughts, and I had to walk up to you and say, you know, uh, I am in liability. Will you accept me back into the group? You know, most Scientologists are used to this, so they would grab it and just sign it. But then there were the ones that made you feel horrible and would say... Would they say, what did you do? Yeah, they'd ask what you, what you did, and they would read it, and then they would look at me and say, you were disgusting, and sometimes would, would refuse to sign it. Wow. So notwithstanding all of that, uh, you know, the heart wants what it wants. That's right. And eventually you aligned with that. Yes. Um, you decided to leave the church. You found love with another woman. Mm -hmm. And you say that's when the trouble started. Now, you, you confess they helped you with your insurance business. You gave them, you say, over five million dollars to Church of Scientology because they keep asking for more, right? You have to right. do the special auditing, and that's forty grand, and you have to do the special intensive course, and that's fifty grand, and blah blah blah. And then you have to tell other people to do that. That's right. what your book claims. So you're five million dollars in. You've become a rich woman in part thanks to their help. No, no, I wouldn't say they helped me with my insurance business. You know, the majority of my clients were outside of the Church of Scientology. You know, I had one or two that were clients inside of the church. When I say help, it's more of just consulting. You know, okay. how to how to build a business, um, how to be better at sales, things like that. You were trying to get people to invest in this movie. Uh, you were sort of the the CEO of this organization that was that was trying to back funding for this movie, and you had a partner who was the director of the movie. And, and what the state of California says is that that was a fraud, that, that you built these senior citizens out of their life savings, and they never got a return on their investment, and they ultimately wound up, that the state of California wound up charging you criminally on it. Um, and then ultimately offered you immunity to testify against your partner. Do I have that right? Well, the beginning part's not correct. I was not the CEO of the company. I was a hired, my, my company was making millions of dollars on, on its own in insurance. Um, I'd been very successful in insurance for over 20 years. So these clients were clients of mine for 20 years. So the man that owned the production company was my closest friend, fellow Scientologist. I trusted him with everything and I was the godmother to his daughter. So he, he was the owner, but I introduced some of my clients. But I put my own money in, my father, many of my family members, and um, it's probably my greatest regret. It will, it will be my greatest regret. You know, the church has basically said to us, you can't believe a word Michelle says, because mm -hmm. this is a person who has been charged with felonies, who is a fraudster, mm -hmm. who uh, was charged civilly and had, had to had agreed to pay back 17 million of the 21 million owed. Um, do they have a point? I think what's so hard is that, number one, anything the church says, I could care less about. But I made a mistake trusting somebody. And, um, but the moment that I knew he was doing something wrong, the moment he left for Europe and came back and said the company was bankrupt, I didn't go to anybody to protect myself. I set up a trust for my clients. I put money into a separate entity, every single asset that I owned, and I, I gave it to my clients. I'll work for the rest of my life to make sure that they are taken care of. I lost more money than anybody. I didn't, I didn't need that. But um, what, what about the proceeds of the book? Proceeds of the book go to the trust. They do? Clients. They do. Okay. Yeah. You know, you heard that. Um, the filmmaker with whom Michelle connected is named Dror Soriff. Uh, and he responded to these allegations as well. He said, look, Mr. Soroff, through his spokesperson, was absolved of all the criminal charges because of a lack of sufficient proof and based on the statute of limitations. Ms. Seward's attempts uh, to pin, that's your former, former name, right? Sorry, yeah. now, Ms. Seward's attempts to pin her criminal actions on Mr. Soroff or to somehow tie them to the Church of Scientology ring hollow and are simply self-serving and entirely implausible because I know you believe that the church sicked some people on you. Right. Um, whether they did or they didn't, and they completely deny doing so, the state is saying they found criminal wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. So it's, however it got started, the state says when right. they looked into it, they found it. Um, you're accepting responsibility for your own actions now. Yes, I never committed a crime. 
I, mean, I gave them all of the paperwork to show where the, I mean, it's simple. It's a money trail, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I gave them the paperwork. I went through financial audits. Um, at the end of the day, all charges were dismissed against me. Right. I fought for my life for three years to prove my innocence, and I did. But as we point out, the state did say um, that, that you conned Californians, most of whom were seniors, and that you got caught. Um, listen, I think good for you for giving the proceeds of the book to the people who the, Cal the state of California says you hurt. Um, well, I think one, one extra point, though, is... You know, the majority of these clients supported me. There were 140 people affected, and they came and wore buttons and sat, you know, in the courtroom yeah. saying they supported me. So we did reach I out to one hard. to one former client who said she did support you, um, although we haven't been able to speak to all of them. Yeah, it's, yeah, a, it's a long list.